Hey guys, today I'll be showing you a tutorial on how to make this beautiful striped buttercream cake. It turned out so well and it's surprisingly really really easy to make. Remember to hit the subscribe button for more cake videos like this one. So for this we'll start off with a chilled cake that's already been coated in Swiss meringue buttercream. For this cake, I crumb coated it and then coated it a second time the night before so it's been chilling overnight and it's nice and firm. You're going to start off by using this Wilton cake comb and you'll start to slowly scrape the sides of the buttercream. I'm starting by applying some light pressure but as I go in deeper, I'm starting to apply firmer and firmer pressure to really create nice clean edges. And if your cake is nice and evenly chilled, it should scrape off fairly easily. It'll be like scraping soft butter. Once you've created the edges with your comb, that's when you can go ahead and start filling it in with the darker colored buttercream. Now here, I really do recommend that you use a dark colored buttercream if you're using a white background. Um, this way it just creates just more of a contrast and the stripes really stand out. Also, don't be afraid to go back in with your piping bag and fill in any gaps that you see. Once you've filled in all the gaps, you can start scraping the excess dark colored buttercream off. Now, don't be afraid if the cake looks really messy here. The edges are not going to look neat and there may be some gaps still. Um, so don't be afraid if it looks messy. Just go back in with a piping bag, fill in any gaps that you see and scrape again. As you can see here, this will probably take you a couple of runs. Just keep at it and keep scraping um, as best as you can. Just as long as you keep scraping with a very light pressure. Now that you've filled in all the gaps, let the cake chill in the fridge for 30 minutes. After the cake has chilled in the fridge, you'll be able to start scraping and really getting those nice clean edges. I highly recommend that when you begin scraping, you do it very lightly at first. If you scrape too firmly, you could run the risk of scraping through your dark colored buttercream really quickly. So here, once you start scraping with your bench scraper, you'll see that all of the little messy edges and the extra buttercream on the white background will start to scrape up really easily. The key to making sure that the edges look neat is to make sure to wipe off your bench scraper after every swipe. I'm scraping it off with a knife here, but it's really important that you cleanly wipe with a paper towel or run it under warm tap water and wipe again just to make sure it's extra clean. This step definitely requires patience because you'll have to go back and look for all the imperfections and scrape them off one after the other. At this point, you can start cleaning your cake board. I'm just using a simple paper towel and just wiping around the edges just to neaten things up. You can also go ahead and chill the cake if you're not ready for the ganache drip. That's, a, that's what I did um, and it turned out fine. But you can also go ahead with it if you prefer. I'm also just neatening up the edges a little bit and just making sure that the cake edges are sharp. Now that the stripes are nice and neat, you can go ahead and start piping on the white chocolate drip. The recipe for the drip is in the description below. It is basically a mixture of white chocolate, heavy cream, and my secret ingredient, light corn syrup. The corn syrup really helps it flow really well while still maintaining control over each and every drip. The key to having a really pretty drip cake is to alternate the length of each drip. So as you can see, at first I'm doing a short drip and then a long drip and then I'm repeating the process all over again. I love adding the drip feature to cakes because not only is it hypnotizing to watch, it is actually a really good way to cover up any minor flaws that you may have on your cake. Especially when you have a complex cake like this one, the drips just really help neaten things up and just take away from any uneven edges that you might have on the cake.
Once you have made your drips on the side of the cake, you can go ahead and cover the top of the cake with the white chocolate ganache as well. Um, you have to work fairly quickly because the ganache sets very quickly. If you don't already have one, I highly recommend doing this with the offset spatula. It just gives you a lot more control and prevents your thumb and your fingers from touching the top of the ganache. If you don't already have one, I'll add a link to my favorite one in the description below. Once you've added the white chocolate, go ahead and chill the cake for another 30 minutes. Now it's time for the fun part. We'll be adding these beautiful roses to the top of the cake. What I'm doing here is spreading the petals a little bit farther apart so it gives me a fuller rose that I can add to the cake. You can do this by very gently pulling the inner and outer petals of the rose. And don't worry, you might lose a few petals in the process like I did. Next, I'm painting the petals of the rose with a little bit of edible gold dust. I'm combining the dust with a little bit of vegetable oil just so it sticks onto the petals a little bit better. Once you're done painting the rose, it's time to go ahead and cover up that exposed stem. Now, I've seen a lot of people on Instagram just putting the stem directly into the cake. I really don't like this because even though you may have an organic rose from an organic farm, you just don't want the chemicals within the plant getting into your nice, beautiful cake. Here's a closer look of how I'm wrapping the stem. I'm just taking a square piece of saran wrap and just going around the stem as many times as I can. And I will eventually cut off the excess that I don't need. Now you can safely insert your roses into the cake. Um, as you can see, I'm pressing down with firm pressure, but not too hard. Um, and just adjusting the roses as needed. And here it is, the final product. Isn't it gorgeous? I decided to sprinkle a little bit of the edible gold dust onto the white ganache just to give it a little extra something. For a cake that looks so pretty, it really isn't that hard to accomplish as long as you follow the steps that I've mentioned in this video. Feel free to have fun with the flavors. I decided to make mine lemon with an almond buttercream. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and for any other information, be sure to check out my website www.cakeittome.co Make sure you hit the subscribe button.